Okay, on uh, the longitudinal ways on a lathe, they go back to old school. They're not a gib way like you have on your compound, your cross slide, uh, your milling machines. In the old days, they would have had just a piece. In fact, the, the bed would have been made out of wood. And then they'd have just attached a piece of steel that might have even been a piece of angle cast iron that they scraped and a flat bar on the other side. The idea of the way is that as it wears down with the V, it will wear down relatively even on both sides. If you had two ways, then there's more possibility of it trying to pick up two different tracks lengthwise. If it happens to drop down a little bit, while that will cause you to come below center on part of the travel, it doesn't affect the straightness of the lathe so much. So that's why they made it with a V and a flat on the other side. Now, as we go into precision building the machines, they precision build these for a ground surface. Some of them are scraped and it's a matter of the straightness on these two surfaces. But underneath is left relatively rough. And I don't know if you got enough light to see it even. You can feel how rough this particular one is underneath here. And there'll just be a little hook that keeps it from rising up a whole lot. And part of why I, I brought this to mind was our video we recently released. And you can see here as I raise up on the carriage that it, it moves quite a bit. And that was the kind of stuff. It's bad anytime you go leaning on a machine. There's always a little bit of spring, a little bit of movement, but especially on a lathe carriage, because in reality, it's just setting here. The hooks that go underneath it, and you will mill those, shim them to get some kind of clearance. Most machines, they'll have 10,000 clearance. Some they, they might have less, might have more. Uh, some machines, they don't even exist. It just literally sets on here by weight. Now, along with that, another thing that I had not thought to mention, a lot of people talk about doing work on the machine in a reverse rotation. So if you're doing it with a reverse rotation, your chips fall away. And it's a common thing you'll do on a lot of CNC's these days as the chips fall away, but they have a way that is captured in multiple directions. The ball, uh, the ball ways, they're roller ways. They're more like a ball bearing. And so they don't have the problem of uh, picking up and being loose. So while you can cut with a bar where it's picking up the tool, it's generally a bad idea. You need, uh, now on this lathe here, a small cut, maybe even a medium cut where it's picking up. There's enough weight in this carriage, you'll get by with it for the most part. A heavy cut, you won't. A lathe half this size, which is gonna be common for a lot of the viewers, and you do a tool where it's picking up, it's gonna actually move your carriage up in the air. And you're not gonna see it, because it's just gonna be a little bit as it bounces there, but it's really gonna give you a hard time getting an accurate cut. So. I got to thinking that this is something that should be discussed after I saw a comment. One person said, well, what's wrong with leaning on the carriage? And um, it's because it's going to move things. Now, I probably can't move this one right off. Uh, definitely not in the up and up down axis without a bar, but um, it's going to move it. I could move, I'm sure, I have no doubt I could move. Um, well, we just tightened that one. That's going to be pretty tight. In fact, both of these are fairly tight, but I'll bet I can still get some, some movement. Well, let's, let's go to the, the real world here. Okay, let's go to the real world. Let's take this. Let's put a bar on here. So we're out to where we are. And then what we care about is what's going on out here near the tip. And the machine that the man was leaning on years ago, it was made in the 40s and the year was in the 80s. So it was a 40 year old machine that had been through a fire and lots of stuff. And uh, 
Okay. This one here is really pretty tight. I can't just lean on the carriage and make it work. But I'm really, uh, eh, let's see. I don't have a way to go to extremes right there. I can try and push sideways here. We're doing all this right after we've tightened this machine up. Yeah. So I can get a little bit there. So I get a little bit of movement there. Not much on this one, but I have seen them where when you lean on the carriage, it will move two thousandths of an inch out at your cutting tool. And I imagine on that machine, it was a pretty good machine. I think leaning on it, I don't think it moved it more than a half a thousandths, but it just still, I didn't like it. It bothered me. It's a bad procedure. Um, just one of those things. But, but you do need to understand on a lathe though, what's going on. That there's nothing holding this other than gravity and the force of being down, the weight of it. And uh, it's different pretty much than all your other ways on your machines. I, I should, shouldn't say all your, there's gonna be exceptions. You will see this in a uh, planer, like that antique planer we had outside. It's the same way. In fact, there's not even hooks to keep it from falling off. It literally, it just literally sets on there. That's all it does. Um, I think an open side, probably a newer model open side planer is the same way. Uh, the sh on a shaper, some of them, the travel in the X direction at the front is just gravity. There's a second, uh, but not all of them have that. Some of them just have ways at the back. There's, there's different designs. The, this is the main place you see that though, where there's just the open ways without anything to trap it where it can't move in other directions. And subscribe, love us, and uh, have a good day.